All right, and I see that Richard just joined from R3, so that brings us to 8 of 11 from the TSC. So we have quorum at this point, Chris, to get things kicked <clears throat> off. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. Uh, so on the agenda today, um, and uh, uh, we have, you know, the, the action item review, we have a proposal from DTCC and IBM um, to discuss a proposed um, Project incubator for Java chain code support for the fabric, um, and then we have our updates. Uh, but I, I'd like to add um, a couple of things. Richard, I'm glad you were able to join. Um, Sorry, I'm late. That's no, 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 no. That's uh, <laughs> that wasn't intended as a sort of a slight. Um, <laughs> no, no, but um, but it's it's it, it's rude to me that uh, these these calls can't start start till we have quorum, and, yeah. and I'm late quite often. So sorry to everyone. Yeah, so, um, but uh, since you've sent in some feedback on the white paper, I was hoping maybe you could just go over that uh, and, and some of your thoughts. Um, since we have a fairly light agenda, I thought that would be good. I, I also sent out, um, in response to one of my action items, to come up with a representation policy. I did something, something to the list about an hour ago, um, and I thought maybe we could add that to the discussion as well, Todd. Um, are there any other topics people would like to bring up? No? Okay. So uh, the first action item is to me to send in a representation policy draft, and I have done that. So Todd, you can take that off. Um, uh, white paper review. So, so um, uh, the, the white paper has been published and there's a, a review feedback form or you know you can send email to the list or however you want to channel that. Um, so I think that's sort of ongoing. We've had feedback from uh, Richard and R3 and we can we can talk about that. Um, and I don't know I didn't I don't recall seeing any other uh, submitted feedback but maybe is Dave on? Uh, yeah hi um, Chris yeah so we do have the forum. We had our meeting yesterday. We reviewed the feedback that um, people had submitted. There was actually only two individuals, and I didn't see Richard's. So Richard, I don't. I'm not sure how that feedback was sent, but um, we we actually would like people to use the the link that we provide on on our white paper working group to fill out the forum. That way, you know, I, we have a little process where. We go through, we're reviewing them, we're keeping track, we're going to have a feedback mechanism. Um, but uh, that's something I did want to discuss is, you know, how, how are we going to get more feedback because uh, we, only, we only had two individuals that had actually submitted anything. <laughs> Every time I pick it up to review it, I get sidetracked. So uh, I have to, I know, I think everybody's probably in a very similar situation. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Um, uh, and then Todd, we have a couple of uh, doodle polls out there. How, how are those going? Yeah, so uh, if you haven't had a chance to complete the doodle poll for the June virtual hackathon or the July uh, potentially West Coast hackathon, please do so. Today's the last day. We'll we'll have people uh, let us know our, their availability so we can get that locked down. Uh, for June, it's looking like uh, the week of June thirteenth um, is is likely the most popular. Uh, the follow-up to that would be the week of June 27th. Uh, so please take a chance, uh, take a quick um, stab at putting your availability in there. Uh, the one question that I did have is in terms of doing the virtual hackathon, wanted to get feedback from the community in terms of what platforms they'd want to leverage to do that. You know, obviously we can boot up a WebEx or go to meeting. We can have Slack running, uh, the mailing lists, uh, all of that. Um, but what other tools or platforms would would help this process for everyone to have a successful virtual hackathon. Todd, did you? Welcome to WebEx. Press one to be connected to your meeting. I think we lost Todd. Uh, n no, sorry, I'm still here. I was just muting someone who who had stuff. Oh, in okay. the background. Sorry. It sounded like you dropped off abruptly. So you're, you're <laughs> suggesting, you know, do we need other tools like Google Hangouts or whatever to facilitate some of this? Yep, um, exactly. <clears throat> so is, is, there a, is there a plat? This is Morali from DTCC. Is there a platform where you can create virtual rooms and 
and you can have you, you know what attendees are there and join virtual rooms i'm just asking thinking loud are there any platforms like that uh, etherpad is used in some some projects and it's it's sort of that i mean you can have sort of a virtual live recorded for posterity um this is Brian. I think part of the value of a virtual hackathon is the um, just just the speed uh, and the the responsiveness of uh, interactions using the existing tools. I mean, knowing that that people are there and you're not competing for their attention, um, or at least only partially competing for their attention with their day jobs um, uh, or their kids strapped to their their chests or whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I, that uh, it just I think the value is knowing that you'll get quick responses. Um, and I, I think you know continuing to use a real-time channel like Slack is a good thing, uh, and and therefore, you know, during this virtual hackathon, um, simply making sure that people are are present and and responding quickly is is a key part of the value. So um, uh, I don't know if people would find additional value in in video um, or or shared whiteboard. Um, I guess that's conceivable. Um, uh, the Etherpad is probably the the or or simply Google Docs uh, in the multi-editing kind of mode. Um, I don't know of any shared shared whiteboard thing that actually works, um, but in terms of real-time kind of editing of a document or something, those those might work. Um, do people find value in voice um, as a group uh, in 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 this kind of thing? Well, I think that you know if it's if it's code involved, that you know using something like uh, Screen Hero, um, which I think we get because we have Slack. Um, uh, would, would be a, an alternative for those of, of us who are hacking on the code and have a question and they could, you know, run it with somebody on Slack and then open up a screen viewer session to, to essentially care on problem solving or coming up with the right algorithm and so forth. I, I've done a couple of um, uh, virtual hackathons and uh, I think one of the main things is uh, that there are some some periodic kind of check-in times in a sense that you know especially when you're doing something worldwide uh, you know if every eight hours or so people kind of you know checked in to sort of say you know hey you know I'm I'm you know beginning work and in in, um, in my time zone and I'm going to be around and I'm checking this you know I'm going to be listening to Slack or I will keep a Skype channel open or I guess in this case you know one of these uh, things. You know, it's really handy to just sometimes be able to just speak up and go, "Hey, does anybody, you know, have any experience with this?" And uh, somebody will 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 pipe up that's in the sort of the same time, uh, you know, time crossover thing. Um, in general, uh, uh, virtual hackathons do need a good, you know, beginning and a and a good end. So don't you know, don't forget forget those. <laughs> Um, there was some. There was a question in chat about it being five days, and I think I have a concern about that as well. I was you know, more thinking along the, the lines of a couple of days, where you know people could really be, know that that there would be resources to be able to talk to. Yeah, Christopher. Yeah, no. oh. yeah go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Just to clarify on that, um, we were just gauging general availability on a week by week basis, and um, it, it's it would not be five full days. We understand people have a lot else going on in their work lives, so. Um, just trying to see when critical mass was on a week by week basis, and we would narrow this down to like two, three days um, to be in line with what we've been doing before. Okay, thanks, Todd. Um, so, for those of you who haven't already <clears throat> hit up the doodle polls, please do, and uh, and then we'll we'll narrow that down and. Um, <clears throat> I think we can take the discussion of any other additional tools that we may or may not want to use to uh, to email. And then finally, was uh, I had promised to summarize the exit criteria. And <laughs> God, I need I need a clone. Uh, so I'll I'll get to that next week. Um, and, uh, so um, as I as I said before, uh, I had sent a proposal for the representation policy. Um, to the to the mailing list about an hour ago, and I, th I thought maybe we could uh, tee that up for discussion. What I can do is I can paste into the chat what I sent so that we 
can all look at it. Or Todd, maybe you could just screenshot the email or something. If you give me a sec, I can drop it into a Google Doc to share out. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. And I'm looking for my note. <laughs> Too much email. I can post it in Chris if you want. Uh, I think Todd's got it, getting it. Uh, I'm just. Yeah. My okay. God, I have just way too much email. How did I? There we go. Pretty pathetic when you can't even find your own email. All right, I just dropped that into the chat window. Thanks. <clears throat> so, um, you know, as, I, as we have uh, discussed previously, um, there's been a couple of occasions where, you know, one of the TSC members has been unable to um, attend, you know, maybe they're on a plane or with a customer or, other, you know, they've got a baby strap to their chest. Um, and, uh, and you know, I think, you know, the, the intent of the TSC was essentially to be, you know, individuals who were um, essentially, you know, chosen by the community to, to you know, provide the, the leadership um, uh, from a technical perspective. But initially, we didn't really have that, right? And so what we chose to do instead as we formed the governance was to set aside a six-month sort of get-to-know Uh, and where the TSC would be uh, a representation of the the members of the premier members of the the foundation or the project I should say um, uh, you know chosen by those companies uh, essentially to represent them uh, for the initial six months and then we would hold an election where those uh, individuals who've contributed are both eligible to uh, sort of either self nominate or be nominated to serve on the TSC um, and who, you know, again, those individuals who contributed are the ones that get to um, cast a ballot for a representation on the TSC. So, um, <clears throat> so, I, so, you know, what we talked about the last time was, well, in, in most organizations that have sort of representation, you know, sort of member representation, uh, you know, some standards bodies and some other, you know, foundation uh, com uh, committees and so forth, um, typically, you can send an alternate if you're unable to attend, and they can speak for the on behalf of the company. Um, and so, I thought we should probably formalize a policy and make it clear that that policy, you know, that we would extend a policy to allow somebody to send regrets and name a designated hitter um, uh, to represent them as an alternate, and uh, for, for for a particular meeting. Uh, or meetings as the case may be and then once we go through the election process and actually select individuals that are elected into the TSC that that policy would be abandoned. So I tried to write that down and then uh, the one exception that I had is that the project technical uh, I'm sorry the project leads that are representing their respective projects on the TSC they could send a designated alternate to represent the project um, as long as they give it an advance notice to the staff and chair. So, thoughts, comments, concerns? Question for you. Um, how many um, uh, project leads are there on, will, are anticipated to be part of the TSC versus um, the, the elected ones? And do project leads also vote? Yeah. Um, how many project leads is how many projects there are? Um, currently, we have two in incubation. Really, I mean, there's sub projects, but um, 
uh, I think you know we have to as a as a as a group decide what you know a project is and and so forth. But you know, is it something that's in incubation, out of incubation? These are things I think we can we can decide as a group as long as we decide them before we have to use them in anger. But um, you know, all good questions. But in terms of whether they get a vote, absolutely, they're they're the leaders. Is the process is the transfer process documented someplace? I went looking for it the other day and couldn't find a. The on is the, it is the what process? The the, the tra how we do this transformation from the first six months to the rest is that is that it's documented? In, it's in the um, I don't know if Mike's on. I think it's in the uh, the bylaws. It, it's in the charter. I'll uh, paste the link charter, in and okay. reference the se section in just a second. Okay. Thanks. Chris, this is a part that I had a few questions that I emailed. Um, how long, um, you know, do these members serve? Are there any periodic elections? You know, things like that. Um, well, it's 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 a year, um, but it's not really relevant to this discussion. Um, again, this is about just dealing with the representation policy to allow for the for this period for this initial six month period to allow somebody. To designate an alternate if they're unable to attend. That's that's really what this is about. So we shouldn't. I mean, uh, you know, we we can have a conversation around the election the process, how we're going to go about doing that. We need to have that fairly soon. But I'd like to just for now just focus well, on this particular policy. I'm, so I'll, I'll I, I'd like to second this motion. I think this that makes sense as long as you know the the voting. So the the basic idea is that. Uh, you know, as if you were elected, you're sort of representing your constituency, not your company, uh, the people who elected you, in a sense. So the point is that that uh, you know you're the only one who can do so. Um, the uh, so I, I think I agree with that in in um, in principle. And then I think the you know the open question is, can project leads do this? You know, can can project leads delegate? And I think that makes sense as long as it's not a large number. <laughs> So um, I'm I'm in favor of the proposal. Alice, you had a question. Should there be guidelines about the qualifications and employment of the alternates that's sent? Um, um, that's a good point. Um, what do people think about that? Um, I'll I'll speak to it real briefly. I mean, you know, the the, you know, so we're only talking about the projects uh, leads that they're the no, only no, ones. No, no, no. Can... Well, okay. Um, go ahead. Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Go ahead. As as I understood the proposal, only that the uh, once we transition, only the project leads can can uh, delegate. Right. And you know, I I think the key thing is that you know has to be somebody in the project. <laughs> I mean, somebody in that in that project, which seems very reasonable, but I don't think that person needs to be a, you know, have any, you know, much higher qualification other than the fact that the the, the project lead goes, hey, you know, I need somebody knowledgeable to represent me at the me at the meeting, uh, knowledgeable at the project. I don't know that there needs to be much more than that. Um, I, I think it's a little bit different, uh, f you know, for the other, but we've said that the others can't delegate, so. Yeah, so um, uh, on that part, I agree. I guess I was uh, Alice, and maybe you could just type in chat if you're not on the on the line. But um, as to whether or not you referred to the project leads sending an alternate, or if you're referring to the the initial six month period that we're almost done with, where you know I might send somebody from Oracle. <laughs> Is that I, I'm not sure if that if, you, if maybe you could clarify which. Which alternate you were referring to? Oh, she meant both. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I tend to agree with Christopher. Um, I think that you know the and I and I try to write it. You know, 
the project lead gets to designate somebody to represent their project in their absence. So um, I don't know, we could qualify or clarify that to, to in indicate that it has to be somebody from the project or, you know, that's active in the project. Uh, I thought that was implied, but we could be more precise, I suppose. And then, it, you know, I would assume that if somebody send somebody from their company in their, in their stead. I agree with Dan. It's up to the delegator to make their decision responsibly. Ah, there been no mention of project leads. Dan, actually, Charter doesn't include project leads for steady state and TSC. I thought it did. Where's Mike when you need him? No, we just uh, mentioned for the startup period, but not for the steady state. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'll have to talk to Mike about that. I think that's a... Uh... <clears throat> I think the maintainer was supposed to be in the steady state. That's my bad. I'll have to go back and talk with Mike about that. I think... Um... I'm trying to remember if we talked about this. Oh, no, 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 that's correct. So, yeah. So maybe we don't need that class. I think, yeah, now that now I'm, I'm thinking back, and I think that we decided to eliminate the maintainers as automatic, thinking that, well, they would likely get a vote from the community anyway. Um, and since there were, um, we were going to have 11, um, there could be potentially more projects or sub-projects, and therefore we might get in a situation where we had too many, so we decided to just make it elected. I'll double-check with Mike to make sure that was the case. So, given that, thanks, good catch, Stan, um, then probably don't need that, uh, that qualification. <clears throat> and what do people think about that? Let's see, Todd, how you pasted that? So to, so it sounds like, I mean, the main thing is if you're elected, you, you uh, can't uh, delegate. Um, right. That's right. So that's the, that's the bottom line proposal. So I would suggest removing the highlighted portion there. Are you sharing something that's highlighted? Yeah, the, the Todd pasted a link to a Google Doc. Oh, there we go. It's just got a cut and paste in my email so that we could all edit it collectively. Good catch, thing. So people have had enough time. So now it basically says, uh, propose that we adopt policy that permitted a TSC member to send regrets for a given meeting and designate an alternate. Once the TSC is comprised of elected individuals, this policy will be abandoned and representation will be exclusive to the elected individual. Everybody agree? That looks good to me. All right, you want to move that, Mick, and we can just get a, Todd can do a roll. Yeah, uh, I move that we accept uh, Chris's proposal for um, uh, alternate representation. Can I get a second, please? Good. I think I heard a second in there. Second it. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, so, Todd, you want to go through a roll, please? Yep. Um, so, Stan, that was a yes. Uh, Tomash? Tomas, are you on the line still? Yes. All right. Uh, 
Stefan? Yes. Uh, Parda? Yes. Hart? Yes. Oshima-san? Uh, yes. Uh, Chris? <clears throat> yes, please. Pick. Yes. Dave? Yes. And Richard? Yes. All right, great. That passes unanimously. All right, thank you. Um, where did the screen go? Here it is. Okay, so up next is uh, Morali. Are you going to present the um, the proposal? For sure, uh, sure, I can. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Or or Shehan, or up to you. Go ahead. You, I'm glad. I'm happy to have you do it. Okay, sure. So let me post the link in the chat window. Give me a second. So we posted the proposal in the wiki and that's what uh, and flagged it um, two days before. So so basically the proposal from from DDCC and IBM is that right now from a chain code or smart contracts uh, the Go language is supported, but what we would want to do is also support Java as a language of specifying your smart contracts. So, um, you know, Todd, do you mind sharing that on the screen for everybody to see, or? Does everyone have the link from, from chat? I was there. Okay. All right. So if everybody has the link from the chat, I, I think from a proposal, it's pretty straightforward, right? Support the Java chain code. And we'll work closely with IBM. IBM has done some initial work, has started some work towards that. And, um, you know, we would put in along, uh, you know, we would put in uh, our expertise, our resources from DDCC side. And Parda is, is my, is our partner in crime who will, who is also committed to this project along with IBM. So, I mean, in short, that's what it is, you know, support Java chain code. Any any questions or any details that we need to answer? Just one question about how you envisage it working is, is it you would envisage people would take the, the core, core fabric code and for one set of use cases they would deploy a version that has Java chain code and for a different independent set of use cases and hence a different network they may use Go or, or potentially yeah. some other language or is it that you would have an, you envisage a network that runs both chain code that is so some, so some chain code is Java and some is Go which means that you know, any, anyone participating in that network would in would in reality need to be able to validate both types of transactions. Um, I, so I guess what I'm getting at is, is this is this is it envisaged that this would be a, a choice for a, at a network level, or this would be an additional things that the that networks would support, and therefore we're, we're, you know, we're, we're adding to the I guess ultimately the complexity in the attack service. Not not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Right. So you know, I uh, for the same network we should be allowed to specify the smart contract, whether it's in Go or Java. So uh, Shihan or Chris, you know, if you guys want to add in anything there, is that that's correct, yeah, I, right? We want we want to support both yeah. in the same network. Yeah, well, that it's correct. I, I think it'd be a choice by the uh, network essentially. So they could either turn uh, both of these on. They could turn just one on. Um, yeah, so so it'd be a network decision. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> do you envision? Any other? Uh, yep. Do you envision further API for the Java added functionality compared to what is available to Go chain code, or is this just a literal translation of um, the interfaces already in existence? I think whatever interfaces that Go supports, the the idea is we'll support the same interfaces from the Java side too.
Is it, um, Thomas, does that answer your question or? Yes, yes, this was my okay. question. So it's basically the same, the same chain code APIs as available in Go, uh, just with uh, an access from Java. Right, so I, I see several questions on the uh, on the chat too. I think the f first question is, what has already been accomplished or what's already working? Shihan, do you want to chime in on that? Uh, yes, yeah, so a, a couple months back, um, uh, IBM wrote an initial kind of experiment of Java chain code, uh, which was uh, working and running but then it has since gotten out of sync with the current progress that's been made in the Fabric project. Um, so, so the plan is that we will contribute uh, that code in a branch initially, um, probably not, um, it may not be in a fully working state yet because it needs to catch up with the current Fabric APIs and then we'll work um, to add the new APIs that have been added over the past month or two. Thank you, Shihan. I, I see Vipin and Greg asked the questions if uh, Fabric allows mixed types, and I think the answer to that question is uh, in the same network, we should, uh, we should be able to have Go as well as Java smart contracts running at the same time. Then the next question is from Jean Safar. What about verifying the code, what version of Java? Um, any, any, I think we would support the latest, any thoughts on that from the, from the group as to should we support the latest version going forward or should we support one, one older version too? Open to uh, ideas there. So just a suggestion on that, that, um, the whole concept of versioning is going to be a really interesting challenge as a general problem. Um, it would be nice to have some insights come out of your project that would help us understand uh, the more general problem and how to architect for it. So um, this is not a this is not a proposed solution. This is just a you know this is a really interesting problem that we should be looking at, and uh, I think this is a really nice area to start looking at it. So, so make, make you're talking about the versioning part of it, you know, not just the Java, but anything else, you know, how do we version? Yeah, so, pr I mean, presumably the Java that you have, the version of the Java that you have over time for long ledgers is going to have to evolve. Um, and so managing the evolution, it's not just a single shot versioning. Um, right. It's going to be, or it's not just a single shot selection of a Java version, it is, a progression of versions over time and how that's reflected back into the semantics of the of uh, the expected semantics for the behavior of the smart contract. This is Jeremy Severed. I would I would say that there are a whole host of issues related to this that are going to come up that presumably would have to be worked out over time. So I think it would be great to get a start on it because there's versioning not just of the VM that the contracts run, but of the co deployed contracts themselves. And then inevitably somebody's going to want to run write contracts in Perl or Shell or who knows what other language. So it, there may be a, a, a need at some point, just as the way the discussions about everything being pluggable, uh, that perhaps the smart contracts need to be defined in some sort of uh, language agnostic uh, protocol form. So, just a thought. But a lot of a lot of good things could come out of this migration. Yeah, it's, it's, I think this is um, a good thing to explore. Um, so, not directly helpful to this, but this is this is something we're doing a lot of work on with Corda. Uh, I guess, as many of you know, um, we're, we're targeting the JVM in Corda, um, and. There could be some opportunity here to, to to look at these things together, and so all the points that have been made about versioning, about sandboxing, about maybe even to the point of having a, a white list of acceptable determinist deterministic classes in the libraries. Uh, yeah, exactly as, as Pardas just said, um, that, that, that they're all part of the, the, the correct design here. I think. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for the feedback, guys. All the points. So, uh, it, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Sorry. Was there another? Oh, determinism. So, is there another question or other questions for 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 Morali? I don't hear it. So, so um, I guess uh, you know we can put the question. One, one quick clarification. So. Um, on the resources, you said that you you expect this to last about a month to a month and a half, um, and that presumably that's with a single specific version, as opposed to some of these other questions that that um, you're likely to help us expose going forward, right? Can you, can you say that say the question Sorry. again, Mike? Sorry, um, I just... you're you're expecting this. What I saw in the project proposal was about a month. Right. Or mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's with a single Java version with a very specific set of, of uh, constrained expectations on, I mean, there's a bunch of questions about verbs and how you restrict uh, access to, uh, to generic um, functions. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is the, that the month, the month and a half seems like an optimistic estimate unless it's very constrained. So, so I think the estimates were based off, uh, you know, part of it that was uh, implemented by IBM. You know, we worked with IBM, you know, Shihan and Murli from IBM. They helped us in the estimation part of it. Um, so, you know, based off their feedback, we came up with that estimate. And, you know, like you said, the, the, the initial version is going to be what is supported on the go in terms of interfaces. And you know, it is not probably going to be complete by any means, but it's going to be a first version, you know, equivalent to Go that can be running on the same network. And then we'll expand that, you know, once it is stable and published, then we can keep expanding on that. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Arda, do you want to add anything from DDCC? Uh, no, Marley. I think, think you covered it all. So I guess I'll put the question. Um, uh, we have agreement to, you know, to support this um, pro uh, sort of sub-project proposal, I guess it would be, because it's uh, uh, It'll be incorporated into the Hyperledger Fabric project. Any, um, I don't know, Todd, do you want to do a roll, please? Or actually, I should, I should ask for somebody. I, I move, and so let's get a second, and then we can take a roll. <clears throat> yeah, I'll second. Thanks, David. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Mick. Todd? All right. Um, Stan? Yes. Tomas? Yes. Stefan? Yes. Pardo? Hi, yes. Hart? Yes. Oshima-san? Yes. All right, and Chris? Yep. Mick? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Richard? Yeah. All right, that passes unanimously. All right, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you guys, and thanks, thanks for IBM support. Oh, thanks for your um, for, for the proposal. Thank you. Okay, I have to find the screen. Let's see. Next up is work group updates. Um, oh, we wanted to have uh, Richard. You want to go through your feedback, Richard, on the white paper? Yeah, sure. So, so hi everybody. So first of all, uh, apologies that it was um, it, it was late. I was seeing it for a few days, and also it wasn't sent to using the, um, the the approved forum. But um, I figured something was better than, than nothing. Um, I, I put quite a few. I sent it to I think it was Hyperledger Technical Discuss. I sent it to. So if you're not on that mailing list, um, you may not have received my um, feedback. Um, I have now sent it to to David Vol, so you can get it from me um, or him if you don't have it and want to see it. Um, I don't propose to go through all the comments line by line. That there's quite a few of them. Instead, I've just got six broad observations that um, um, that, that, that maybe we can discuss, or, or, or you can we can take as um, take as input. 
Um, the, the first one was so, so the most, mostly minor, and then there's one significant one, and I'll come to the significant one at the end. Um, so, the first observation was there are, um, there are there are lots there are lots of unsupported assertions uh, throughout the paper, primarily about um, the value of, of, of this technology of, of, of blockchain technology, um, and, and clearly those of us who are involved in these projects. Um, completely believe those assertions else why are there, would we, why else would we be doing this um, but the assertions do have to be justified so I think we should either we, I, think we, I think we should be uh, I think we should be I guess we should be, we should, we should be humble and somewhat modest by either saying that we believe this technology has wide-reaching implications or we believe it will um, or, or we don't say it because the reality is with very few exceptions none of this technology is yet deployed at scale in production environments so it's, so it's not correct to say we know it. Um, you know, we, we know for sure what its impact will be. So that, that may just be a stylistic question. But when I think about you know the, the good white papers you read, and I think perhaps you know think about the you know the the, the seminal Bitcoin paper, um, you know, it, it, it stood the test of time because it didn't make um, unsubstantiated claims. So I think we should um, we, we should dial back some of the rhetoric um, or, or or at least qualify it. Um, the the second broad comment was there is a lot of assumed knowledge. Um, in the paper, so there were quite a few terms um, used without having been introduced or defined, um, and and some that are probably uh, one might think are appropriate to use. You know, blockchain being a perfect example, but um, but we know that that these terms are evolving in their interpretation, and different people understand different things from them. So I think the paper would would benefit from just as a stylistic approach. Whenever we introduce say a, a term. We, we define it, or we have a glossary. Um, but right now, there's I think there's, there's there's multiple opportunities for the paper to be misinterpreted because um, we, we use terms that aren't defined. Um, the the third point relates to um, vision. Um, the, the thing that struck me was actually the vision. The, 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 although there is a section on vision, it doesn't. It, it's, the, the reader is left wondering at the end actually what the vision is. Um, the closest I, I got was, um, and I think this may be the answer, the closest I got was the vision is we believe, we, we as the authors believe that um, the blockchains need to be, lots of different blockchains all need to be built from the same underlying modular architecture. And that's, that, that, that may or may not be true, well, I happen to think it's not, but that's fine, we can have a debate about that. But it's, it's not a particularly inspiring vision, it's quite a specific technical one, um, and it may or may not be true. Um, and the point I made in the in, in the comment was, um, I think you can make you can make a compelling argument that the modularity in a single code base is um, is desirable by perhaps by analogy to, um, to to the history of Linux. But 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 you do have to make the analogy. You have to you have to motivate it and, and take the reader with you. Um, uh, I should I should say I, I probably even if that were done, I would probably push back on that. But that, but that's fine. We can have a debate. But right now the vision is not particularly clear, and it and it's not it's not justified with any. Um, with any, um, with, with, either with any argument or with any rhetoric, so there's, there's a bit of what to do there. Um, fourth one, generally, and I guess this is a draft, so it's fine. But I think as um, as, as, a do, as a document that one would hope would have would have significant import visibility and would be the, you know, the the rallying cry for this this project of projects. I think the quality of the prose needs to be. Um, it, we, we need, needs to be raised. That, so that, that may come out in the editing at the end. Uh, but right now, there are quite a few sentences that you have to read three times, and at the end of it, I still didn't understand what, what the sentence meant. So there's, um, there needs to be a focus on, on, on the quality of the written prose. But, but, but again, that's, it's a minor comment because that, that, that can be addressed um, later. And then on to two more significant ones. Um, the, and this is my fifth comment. Um, there's a section labeled requirements. But it doesn't really contain any requirements. You know, I expect requirements to have, um, you know, have, have words like must, should, may. It should tell us what the system should do. Um, to a large extent, the requirements section actually reads more like a, more like a sales pitch or a description of what the system does or is, rather than the the the, 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 the objectives against which it's being engineered. Um, it may. It, that one may just be a, a style issue, but I suspect there may actually be some some heavy lifting to do there to to to, to get that into shape. And then my final comment, and this is the significant one, is the the paper, and, and this may be because of its heritage, because you know, the um what, you can still see echoes of the original OBC paper in it. That the paper, at least to my view, I don't think it yet 
adequately distinguishes between the vision, mission, objectives of the Hyperledger project as a whole, and the the design goals and the the, the, the architecture of, of of individual projects under incubation in that project. So, if you, when we switch to the the architecture section, um, everything before that, with a bit of work. You know, is something that, in principle, I think most people could sign up to after the after the fixes are made as a as a vision for the Hyperledger project as a whole, and and different designs could then could then flow from there. But the architecture section onwards is essentially just a description of, of OBC or perhaps OBC with with with, with the bits of proof pieces added. Um, there's nothing that I could see about Sawtooth Lake, and it wasn't made clear to the reader that there is the high-level project, and then there are code bases under incubation, of which there may be many, and we may never get to a single code base, or, 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 or instead, if the objective is to get to a single code base, that should be part of the vision, and it should be justified. So, so in, so, so in, in, in summary, um, um, that, that may sound like a whole list of, um, of criticisms, and it's not intended to be. Hopefully, just take it in the, um, in the spirit of, um, of, of, of constructive criticism. Um, some of them are just stylistic. But one or two of them, especially the requirements and the, the distinction between overall vision details about specific code bases, I think they are probably more fundamental, but again, still fixable. Yeah, uh, thank, thanks, Richard. You know, that's, that's excellent feedback and, and very thoughtful. And uh, we'll certainly take all those points into consideration. You know, just, just one point on, on requirements, for example. You know, um, and I guess maybe we need to make this a little bit more clear, but, you know, this isn't meant to be the requirements document. We, we really just wanted to provide some examples that would be illustrative of the types of features that we were looking to do. Um, and uh, I guess we, we want to make that a little bit more clear. Um, but, but, and in fact, you know, so we did receive other feedback submitted through the form where uh, we discussed yesterday that you know th there is some more examples that were being provided or use cases and requirements and and in fact we felt that you know we wanted to uh, have those uh, ideas um, transferred over to the requirements working group and um, and so yeah again you know uh, we 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 just are trying to be uh, have a couple of samples that are illustrative of, of the type of features that we were looking to do. But I mean, the rest of your comments, I think, are, are really excellent. And uh, and we can take those into heart and, and make some modifications to reflect that. Great. Thanks, David. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> and uh, I uh, echo David's thanks, Richard. There were, it was great feedback, so thank you. Um, any other comments, questions on this topic? Otherwise, we can move to the uh, updates. OK. Uh, let's see who's up first. <clears throat> Oleg, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, we're working on the um, use cases, on the financial use cases in the group. Uh, we discussed the, uh, the swaps, interest rate and currency swap. We had an um, interesting discussion about um, asset depository use case, um, which in our view is um, a base use case for uh, many use cases, for equity contracts and for, uh, for fixed income and for property management. So we're still uh, discussing this use case, um, different trading scenarios, so whether they're traded uh, over the counter or on the exchanges. Um, we'll probably need some help from uh, members of the project from DGCC to validate um, this use case when we have it. Um, there's also a discussion um, on how much of the implementation of workflow detail do we need to include in our use cases. Um, basically, do we need to limit the uh, use case document only to user stories, or um, should we uh, propose how this use cases can be uh, solved or implemented by a blockchain. Um, this week, work is, I'm working on uh, equity contracts and fixed income, which, like I said, derived from asset de uh, depository. Um, Frank is working on uh, corporate action. Um, so hopefully, in a week or so, we'll uh, pretty much complete all the uh, financial use cases, at least uh, uh, the, the first milestone that uh, we need to bring. Um, so. All in all, I think we've picked up speed 
um, like I said, we'll, uh, we should be done soon with financial use cases, and um, I'll move on to, uh, and I'm already working on peer-to-peer uh, -peer insurance and uh, KYC global database. So that's all from us. Okay. Thanks, Oleg. Any questions for Oleg? Okay. Next up, we have uh, Ron. Hello, folks. Um, so a quick update on the architecture of our group. Uh, we had the larger group uh, meet yesterday, and uh, we're making uh, good progress on kind of uh, understanding at least the consensus module and uh, as well as uh, the smart contract, business logic layer, and how those two interact. Um, uh, to start off, uh, uh, we had previously decided to use Slack as the primary communication channel. And, uh, and yesterday, uh, prompted by Brian's uh, email, we had a discussion around uh, is that still working for us as a group? And we decided, given that uh, uh, you know we wanted to have deeper discussions uh, with appropriate context, Slack is uh, is not working well for that. So we are going to start a mailing list. Uh, so Todd is working the logistics about setting that up, and uh, hopefully we will have some automated method to kind of move people over from the Slack channel to the uh, to the mailing list. If not, then uh, we'll just uh, have people self-subscribe to the mailing list. Uh, we'll post, uh, uh, post that on the Slack channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, hopefully we can have more of those discussions on the deeper discussions on the mailing list. Um, uh, so uh, just a quick reminder, uh, we, uh, you know, ideally we would like to have uh, the the use cases uh, and requirements kind of big before we uh, we can um, have uh, more detailed discussions holistically on the architecture. But uh, uh, you know, while we wait for uh, the requirements work group to kind of uh, work through those, uh, we decided to pick up uh, the, 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 the more obvious topics uh, with uh, some understanding of requirements, um, uh, preliminary requirements, and uh, deep dive into those. And we picked, uh, you know, the functionality and interaction of the consensus modules and the business logic smart contract layer, if you will. And uh, that's what we are going down um, now. And um, we broadly have two approaches. One, which is more closely aligned uh, with uh, the Bitcoin style uh, mechanisms uh, and Sawtooth Lake as well. And the other one, um, uh, approach uh, and uh, that uh, uh, the fabric uh, folks are uh, are still developing and are in the process of documenting, which is motivated by the uh, the requirements for confidential transactions. And so, uh, you know, the next step is to kind of uh, understand and discuss the pros and cons of the two approaches uh, and see whether uh, both of those can uh, can indeed meet some of the confidentiality requirements and. Uh, uh, Hopefully, by the end of that, we'll uh, be able to see whether we can align on one approach. And that's uh, pretty much where we are right now. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Any questions for Ron? If not, next up is... Oh, last, I lost my place. <laughs> uh, next up is Dave. So, so, Dave, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about... Yeah. So... Um... Um, so, yes, yeah, so we had our our, our uh, update yesterday, uh, our weekly meeting, and um, you know, our, our we one of the things we we just confirmed that our strategy is to put an an update and publish a new draft every other week. So you know, again, basically the process is uh, you know, weekly. We we review the the feedback that's been submitted, discuss among ourselves, uh, either uh, assign uh, individuals to do the updates or we'll do it right there on on the call um, and then uh, and then the following week is when we would we would incorporate those so um, uh, the idea is to have a new new version every other week um, as I had mentioned earlier uh, the yesterday there there are only two individuals that had um, uh, submitted uh, feedback. Uh, apologies, Richard, we didn't meet, uh, see yours. So for some reason, you know, my corporate email is still filtering 
somehow that, that some of these technical mailing list things. It's odd, Todd's email comes through, but not the other. So for whatever reasons, right, we, we missed that. Um, but it, we, we would appreciate it if people, you know, if they go through the, the form on the white paper, you know, we will be sure not to miss and we'll be sure to be able to respond to, um, you know, the suggestions for, for feedback on, on the paper. Um, so yeah, but it did seem light. And in fact, uh, one of the things that we wanted to discuss and ask, you know, the, the TSC here is suggestions on how we could in, in get more feedback. I mean, we, we did think about, you know, right now, unfortunately, the, the only way you would do this is by kind of have to, you know, it's kind of buried in the wiki, in the white paper work, working group, in, you know, all the way down there, you have to click on to, to see where to do the feedback. We were thinking if we had something, you know, up on the charter page in the wiki or through hyperledger.org and maybe emails, but, um, you know, we figure that perhaps Linux Foundation could <laughs> help with some of this as well. Um, so we could encourage more feedback from a broader audience. I, I thought that that was part of the purpose of the new announcements list. Um, so I, you know, I would like to see these types of things be put on the announcements list. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. You know, again, this is supposed to be low traffic, but you know, when you want people to pay attention to something, uh, I think I agree with that. The thing that struck me though was, um, and I didn't say anything previously, um, but I tend to, uh, you know, it struck me when, you know, Richard sent me his feedback initially, and then he sent it to the list. It struck me that, you know, we hadn't seen any others. I, 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 I brought it up because I thought that was the only feedback, and until you, you noted this morning that you had a couple of others um, send in feedback, I think part of the problem there is a sort of lack of visibility. Um, and, you know, my, 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 my sense is that typically, and, and I, I thought we had some good conversation, you know, here this morning around it, I think that typically it's when you see feedback from somebody else that often that triggers your own thought process and and that it's you know the act of engaging in a conversation and a dialogue around a particular question or concern or um, uh, or, or, or recommendation that I think we get the most engagement and I'm just wondering Dave if maybe the right approach would be to um, uh, you know, even, you know, maybe even just set up a temporary mailing list where we could, you know, people could post their thoughts or an edited version of the, you know, a commented version of the document and engage others in a discussion and if maybe that might trigger a little bit more interest and and, and generate a little bit more feedback. I, I, again, I'm just sort of thinking out loud here, but, you know, I was struck by, uh, you know, so you guys have seen the feedback obviously from the others that um, sent it in through the form, but nobody else has. Um, yeah, that's yeah. an excellent. That's an excellent point. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's there, there shouldn't be any reason why we would want to prevent other people from seeing suggestions. No, yeah. So I, yeah, yeah, I'm sure of that. Yeah, that's, I know that wasn't the intent. I know you're just trying so, to pick an appropriate way of collecting and, and managing the feedback and. Uh, email would obviously be a little bit more challenging because it's all over the map. But um, so, is there a, a link? Is there a Google link um, that allows for you know commenting directly on it? I think last time I I tried looking at it, it, it you know you couldn't you could view it, but you couldn't comment. Um, but if you're using Google Docs, you, there's this intermediary mode where you can invite people to comment but not edit. Yeah, the, so the, I, I, I did. Yeah, you know, I just I, I changed the end of it from I think view to edit on the URL, and that that feature was available. I just couldn't use it when I was on a plane, but it does seem to be the feature there. Yeah. This is Brian. I think um, uh, my 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 take would be there's there's probably some input you want to incorporate from the feedback you've gotten already, uh, and I would take the time to make some changes incorporating that feedback, but then I would post it to the announcements list. Uh, and if there's concern, also post about it to some of the other lists. But I would, I would try to have as few other channels for feedback as possible, like no more than two. Um, and I would also encourage. I mean, this is this is a pretty foundational document. In some ways, this isn't quite the constitution for this uh, group, but it's pretty darn close to something. 
you know, that, that really people will be rallying around and, and need to, I think, feel comfortable with. Um, and I, right now, the, the most common watering hole um, for the community, I would argue, would be the technical discuss list. And so uh, I think, you know, once you're ready for broader input um, and ready for what could be a high volume, I would try to focus comments, um, uh, you know, on the on technical discuss and maybe as comments in the Google Doc, um, but not editing, right? Um, uh, just just try to have as few so that people see there's other activity and perhaps even can build upon each other's comments. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, the it, it's the one of the advantages of the form, and you know, also we could certainly make that that feedback form visible. You know, when somebody submits uh, submits their feedback, it actually you know the Google provides uh, sort of a spreadsheet list and and way of organizing it. So it's convenient for us as a group of people to just you know. Go down, starting at the top one, work our way down, 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 and, and you know, see and discuss them uh, in isolation. It's, it's somewhat uh, convenient for for us. You know, we we we, we want to make sure everyone has a a, a bit of an op uh, ability to uh, voice their opinion uh, on it. Not everyone is always in an agreement. Um, so so you know, as a group. Uh, we'll debate a couple of different ideas back and forth uh, amongst ourselves, and again, you know, it, there's having that that structure very much helps facilitate that uh, that that workflow. Um, and uh, but I also agree with and appreciate, you know, that when people see you know, or the value of you know a group chat, it just it, can really bring out a lot of good feedback as well. So I guess we're just trying to, we need to find the right balance. But um, uh, certainly, you know, adding visibility so everyone can see who has suggested what is, would be a, a key way to make it happen. Um, my, my only issue, you know, with email lists is I know my email box is just crazy um, <laughs> with so many things. Even with filters, it's, I, I'm missing a lot of things uh, now and then. Um, but uh, but that's the benefit of of having these group chat sessions as well. So um, that's those are all good suggestions. Okay, thanks, Dave. Next up is Christopher. Yes. Um, so we only meet biweekly, so we uh, didn't meet this week. However. Uh, we are hoping that uh, next Wednesday we will have um, the IBM uh, membership services team presenting, uh, you know, a sort of a deeper dive into um, the architecture and a little bit about the cryptography and and confidential um, uh, confidentiality support that the uh, membership services uh, feature of the the fabric. Um, uh, demonstrates and so I have not received a confirmation that uh, that um, they're going to be ready uh, for Wednesday, but I'm I'm hoping to. Okay, thank you. Next up is me, uh, CI. So um, we've actually made a lot of good progress this week. Um, I'm still catching up from yesterday. There was a flurry of activity, so I'm. I'm not actually completely clear on exactly where we are, but I think, and uh, uh, I think that we have uh, Jenkins up and running. We're looking at getting it also to be able to spin out um, slaves onto um, different, you know, alternate um, uh, alternate platforms. So that's a, a good thing, and it's making some progress. And I think that um, the beginnings of uh, setting up at least for the fabric, um, and uh, I'm hoping that we can get the fabric API and the Sawtooth Lake going up there as well. But um, there's the the beginnings of process to set up um, an actual pipeline and start getting the the processes flowing out and and uh, and and tied into some of the other various things. Um, I, th I think you know we're going to have a little bit of work to do to integrate with Slack and 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 email or whatever. Um, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know, integrating some of the other 
various checks uh, that we want to do when we when we get on to Garrett. Uh, Garrett is also stood up, but we're sort of in. Uh, we're only using it currently actively for the the CI pipeline itself, um, and uh, you know spinning up the the Jenkins uh, jobs and so forth. Um, uh, but eventually, we'll want to transition uh, other things there as well. So, uh, I think Todd, what we probably need to do um, is schedule, uh, you know, maybe just an overview training session. I don't know if we want to take time out of a TSC call to do that, or set up an independent office hours kind of a thing where maybe people, if they're interested uh, and need to, could get a, you know, an immersion into uh, using Garrett because I think it's. It's not something that everybody is necessarily familiar with, and I'd like to make sure that before we start moving projects over uh, to Garrett to, you know, sort of enforce some of the review criteria and so forth, that um, uh, people are prepared for that, and it's not going to be too disruptive. Um, and um, no, so I think you know, I think there's been some really great progress, and now that it's actually up and running, I, I expect that. Um, We'll start to accelerate uh, that process, and and we'll start to be able to get um, differentiating uh, pipelines going, uh, where we can do more than just run one pipeline. For instance, where we can actually have um, different sort of uh, independent pipelines: one that does smoke tests, one that does the full test, one that, you know, um, the one that's building out and continues deploying to some place. We can have long running tests running against that, and so forth. So. Um, all good, um, and uh, I'm very pleased with the progress we've made thus far. People are more than welcome to engage. Just jump on the uh, the CI pipeline channel in Slack um, and uh, and have at it. Now, the the one thing that I did uh, just want to note is um, I I tried to reach out um, to uh, um, uh, Mick, to your team, you know, to Dan and and others, to say, you know, Jenkins is there, and and it, I'd love to see the process of sort of migrate. I know you guys said that you were using Jenkins uh, internally previously to, for Sawtooth Lake, and I'd love to see that transitioned over. Um, and then um, Tomash, uh, I think for for the uh, for the Fabric API um, build out, if there's something we can do to help transition and transfer, I should say, over the uh, some of the build processes that you have into uh, the the Linux Foundation's Jenkins, that would be super as well. Yeah, this is Dan on the Sawtooth project. We we put a bunch of detail into the uh, about our Jenkins process into a into a thread with uh, the other folks on the the CI stuff. Uh, that's probably what I need to catch up on. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, that's all I had for the CI. Um, any other topics people need to bring up? If not, people can have 15 minutes back or so. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Um, good call, and uh, we'll see you all in virtual space. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.